Hello everyone and welcome back to another edition of The Feeding Frenzy. As always, you can find something in the medium of your liking, either something worth listening to, worth reading, worth watching, and as always, worth thinking about. This week we have two podcasts. The first one is a Radiolab podcast. I don't think I've actually shared Radiolab on here before, but... Earlier in the week, I was kind of bored, and that boredom led me down the path of thinking about life. Many of us know this cell in our high school biology classes as the powerhouse of the cell. And if you guessed it, it is the mitochondria I'm talking about. And so this first podcast is called Cellmates, which will serve as a primer for those of you who maybe only followed the mystery of the mitochondria, as I'm calling it in my brain <laughs> this whole week, to... Be a primer as more of an interesting, fun, journalistic piece because it's more of a conversation. I just felt that this conversation was endearing and it wasn't super heavy on the science-y stuff, which, as always, I'm going to pull you into the deep end along with me. So if this what's your appetite, you're going to really like the next podcast. The next podcast is with Vemsi Mutha with Peter Atia. And so... There's a lot here. Bear with me. I understand if you're not into all of this science and the nitty gritty here, but I think it'll be worth your time if you care about the mystery of the mitochondria in any form. And so first, a little bit of background on Dr. Vamsi Mutha. He is an expert in mitochondrial biology and an investigator of the Howard Hughes Medical Institute and shares his breadth of knowledge on the mitochondrion organelle, its history, function, genome, architecture, and his research of rare mitochondrial dysfunction. Vamsi is currently focused on finding clinical treatments for the 300 some identified rare mitochondrial disorders, but there's a wealth of potential implications for longevity and chronic diseases as this works. One of the exciting functions mitochondria seem to have is oxygen clearing effect in cells. And if this is impaired, it can cause damage to those cells. Understanding the origins and functions of mitochondria will yield fruit for decades to come. And so this is really just a very, very brief primer on everything they covered. But what I thought was good is that they actually go into the details of the origins of mitochondria, much more scientifically than in the Radiolab podcast. So if you wanted to understand that, it's all there for you. I just find it fascinating. The fact that endosymbiosis occurred between two cells where that is basically a cell is absorbed by another cell but is left intact and then survives inside that cell and then becomes symbiotic in nature. And that's become the foundation of almost all cellular life on Earth. And it's incredible that it even exists and that as far as we can tell, it's only occurred once in the history of life. And to think now that we have or are starting to have tools that allow us to fine tune these little powerhouses in our cell, in theory, possibly extend life because of just what they do in keeping us healthy. And so with that, I hope you spend the time to listen to this. And if you find it interesting or have any other resources, I'd love to hear what your thoughts or feelings are on this topic. And now we're going to depart from the world of mitochondria and into the other areas that I find interesting. The article this week is The Secrets of the World's Greatest Freediver from GQ. The world's greatest freediver is Alexei Molkanchov. And the author likens to what Alexei is attempting to free Solo and Alex Honnold. But instead of going up and climbing as high as you can without equipment, the difference here is Alexi is going down underwater in just one breath. To me, it's even more insane than free solo in some ways. They're just different worlds. And in the case of free diving, to me, it's even more of different worlds because the idea of training your body to do something like free diving goes against all of our survival instincts because we're not aquatic animals anymore we can't or don't like holding our breath for very long periods of time and yet alexi has somehow been able to do that he's can hold his breath for some nine minutes which is crazy and it makes me wonder just how 
will adapt in the future because if we have people like Alexi or like Alex Honnold who push the edges of what humans are capable of and that on the surface we may not and that's not a pun intended we may actually find out more about what it means to be human and understanding more about ourselves it's a fascinating idea I can't wait to see what happens here I wasn't expecting to find this article but it's really fun to explore this very unique sport worth watching this week we have julie noki on the tedx stage sharing her experiences as the six-year overnight success and i'm sure many of you have seen her viral videos explaining the pandemic to your past self at least for me when i watched those videos i found it one of those kind of videos that cut through the tension of the moment it basically allowed us to step out of the uncertainty of the moment and have a little bit of you know levity and laugh at the situation a little bit even though it was very very heavy at times and sometimes those things as most well-written or comedic things do is they allow you to, to just pop the bubble but in this video she shares her path leading up to becoming a viral hit and it's really interesting because we assume all of these people like Julie as a modern example, but so many others that they just somehow got lucky. And sure, that's part of it. But I think her analogy in this situation is really cool, where it's the analogy of a bucket and everything you do is filling up with the bucket and you never know which one of those drops will overflow it. Even more so is you want your bucket to be deep enough so that once it does overflow, it captures enough of the audience from that point forward. And I just thought it was a really cool and lighthearted way for her to share a little bit of behind the scenes of all of the effort she's put in to be the one hit wonder that lasts and props to her for making it happen. And so I hope this, if you're trying to create something or pivot or whatever, I hope you take something away from it because I think you will, uh, because we're all pushing our own edge or creating something we don't know if it'll ever matter. And yet I think it's because of that fact that you should keep going. And as always, we'll close out with a quote worth pondering. Today's quote is from Soren Kierkegaard. The unhappy person is never present to themselves because they always live in the past or the future. And that's gonna wrap up this week's Feeding Frenzy. And as always, I'd like to make this a conversation with you, the audience. And if you have anything related or anything you found interesting in your week, please share it in the comments. And I will likely share them here in future editions of the Feeding Frenzy or continue on in further fleshed out formats, either in blog posts or on the podcasts. And with that, everyone, you can find more information or more content over at feedingcuriosity.net for all of the other content we produce. And I will see you all in the next edition.